in this episode, I'm going to be talking about some different types of study tips, whether you're in college or medical school, just some tips on how to memorize better as well as how to be more efficient and effective during your study time. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. So the first point that I want to make is how do you memorize more effectively? And so when I was in college, I used to always make flashcards, but I would always make flashcards either by hand or I would eventually use Quizlet. And that worked well in college because there wasn't all that much information that I had to remember and I didn't really have to retain it that long. But once I got into med school, it was much more difficult. There was so much more information that you had to retain and you had to keep that information retained for a long period of time. And I think that the best way, if you need to something like that, the best way to get around that is to use some type of space repetition app. And what I used was Anki. I thought that that was the most popular one at the time. And really the way that it works is it quizzes you on information again, based on how well you know something. So if you know something really well, it won't quiz you for a longer period of time. And when you know something not as well and you're just starting to learn it, it'll quiz you very, very frequently. And so this is a great way to not only learn information, but be able to retain it for the long term. So that if you really know something, but you need to be refreshed on it, maybe it'll quiz you every month or something like that. And you can determine how well you know something based on how well you grade that individual flashcard. So it's very personalized. But the best way to make flashcards I have found both in college as well as in med school was to pose these questions or these facts as questions rather than just simple definitions. So instead of just listing off some type of word and making a definition, that's a very passive way to learn as well as a passive way to quiz yourself. Always think of test questions while you're reading and make those test questions into flashcards so that the next time you're reviewing these flashcards, it's almost like you're taking another question and you're rehearsing and you're reviewing it and really making yourself think why. I think that it's much more effective when you're making the flashcards to make them as if you're quizzing yourself because it's just a much more active way of learning rather than just passively copying down some type of definition from the back of a book. The other thing that I think really helped with memorization was using mnemonics. And I think that mnemonics come in all shapes or forms. I think the most common ones that we think about are things that they go by some type of either word that you're breaking down each of the letters into a different uh, phrase or a different word, or you're using it, for example, like using some type of framework, A, B, C, D, E, how do we go through a chest x-ray, or how do you think of altered mental status, things like that. The other way that I think that mnemonics can be well utilized is through visual mnemonics. And these go through a variety of things. One is, one example I can give is like in Sketchy Medical or in Picmonic, where you're trying to memorize different types of either pharmacology or different types of microorganisms or antibiotics. They'll go through a picture and they'll walk through what every single aspect of that picture means to them and how that can help you memorize the different facts of that disease or that different drug or whatever it may be. You can utilize the same technology if you were to draw something, you can make that same visual mnemonic. I think that this is a great resource if you're in med school. If you're in college, you may have to do something a little bit different. But definitely another thing that people oftentimes overlook is to use spatial memory. Right? When you're thinking about some type of disease, instead of just trying to memorize all the facts about it, you can think of it in a very spatial framework. So thinking about some type of disease of what are the, all the symptoms, well, we'll start with the brain, we'll start with the sinus, we'll work our way down into the, if there's any ENT issues, if there's any cardiovascular or lung issues, and then GI and so on and so forth. And you're really thinking about it in a stepwise approach. It's a little bit easier to remember based off your spatial recognition. Your Actually, your visual memory and as well as your spatial memory is much more effective than just simply hearing something or simply reading off of something. It's much more effective if you can walk through in your brain some type of activity. The next thing is really to be strategic with your resources. I think this is important um, because the best way that we learn is really to quiz ourselves, And the best way to get quiz is to use questions, whether these are questions that are from like a question bank. For us, we use things like UWorld. If you're in college, then you may not have access to a generalized question bank that you can utilize. Things like using old exams, whether these are exams that your teacher gives or other exams from other universities, or also just passed down through your classmates and things like that are going to be very very, very effective because they really quiz you on things that you may not have learned. And you have to utilize these practice exams, not as a way to 
test what score you're going to get on your exam, but they should be a way that you utilize the practice exams earlier than the last day before your test in a way that it will help you figure out what do you still need to learn and what do you still need to remember or learn for the first time that you weren't focusing on before, that your flashcards were not covering. So I think that this is something that oftentimes uh, people don't use full advantage of, especially in college. Next thing is going to be sticking to some type of schedule. I think that everybody has some form of a schedule, whether it be a big to-do list for the month or a week, or some people really like daily schedules and really breaking it down by hour. I was personally the type of person that really just wanted these big picture goals. I wanted every single week, this is what I wanted to accomplish and this is what I wanted to be done. I thought it was important because it helped me to be proactive. I think that you always have to assume the worst, assume that something's gonna go wrong closer to your exam. I can give an example of step one is that I always wanted to make sure that every single week I would leave a certain amount of time um, at the end of the week or also at the end of my full exam study so that I can review things because you have a to-do list, you have things that you want to be able to accomplish, but not everything is going to be able to be accomplished. Always put more on your to-do list than you can actually complete because it always will give you that pressure to, to do more. Um, but it allowed me that if I wasn't able to either accomplish something or there wasn't something that I understood, I always had that extra time to be able to review it or to be able to go over that so that I was never pressured when the time came right before my exam that I didn't plan that out. I wasn't proactive. I didn't have that schedule planned out for me. I think it's good to have some type of to-do list, good to have some type of goals, at least general goals. But also being proactive in regards to making your schedule of putting in time for reviewing your lectures. So when I was in college, what I would always do, especially early on in college, I would just go to lecture and not really understand what was going on, try to learn things for the first time. And then a couple weeks later or a month later, whenever my test was, try to review and cram everything in. And that didn't really work all that well as, as things started piling up, especially not in med school. I think that really pre-reading and post-reviewing lectures are going to be extremely effective because you may, in, especially in med school, when you have so many different lectures from so many different breadths of study, you may not have time to be able to go over all of the lectures that you had before. So pre-reading a lecture, so maybe just spending 10 minutes on the objective slides or the summary slides to really get the big picture of what the information you need to know so that when you go into the lecture, it's a lot better use of your time. And then after that, do some type of review after and make some notes based off of the notes that you're making in school, based off the actual slides that you have, because there's a very good chance that you're not going to be able to review that lecture in its entirety later on. But it's fresh in your brain. You know exactly what the key points were, so you can be much more efficient and much more effective uh, with your time. The next point that I want to make is really figuring out what type of learner you are and really sticking with that. Whether you're a group learner, whether you're an individual learner, whether you like loud or quiet places, surround yourself around like-minded people. Surround yourself in these areas that you study best in. If you don't study well in, in a group, then obviously don't study in a group. But if, if that's the way that you learn best and you like quizzing each other and you like figuring these things out together, then that's how you should pose your learning to be the most effective. The other thing that I found that was really helpful for me, and this is just an example, is that I was really good under pressure. When I found that when I was studying for finals during college and, and also in med school, that when I was studying during finals week, I was so much more efficient than when I was not studying for finals week. I really didn't do anything before finals week came around. And it wasn't really because finals week I had all the information in my brain and I was so much more efficient. It was really because I was stressed. I was stressed that I didn't have enough time. And so what I did was I made my schedule when I wasn't during finals week, I made it a little bit busier. So I would I would have my volunteering, I would have my job, I would have all this thing that made me just a little bit more busy so that I was a little bit more pressured, a little bit more efficient when I wasn't during finals week. And then once finals week came around, didn't do any volunteering, didn't do uh, my other jobs. Um, and so that I was also just efficient during finals week and also efficient not in finals week. And these are just examples of things that you got to kind of trick yourself into learning better and being more efficient. And one of the biggest points that I'll have to make is that studying longer doesn't actually mean that you're studying better. Better. So a lot of people, they like to brag about how long they're studying and how much time they're putting into their studying. But actually, those are not correlative. It's not something that if you study longer that you're going to get a better grade. Probably you will. But at the end of the day, just because someone's studying longer doesn't actually mean they're studying better. You really have to be efficient during the time that you're, you're studying, right? 
put your phone away. Don't use your computer if you don't need it. And if you really need your computer then and you have no self-control whatsoever and you are always on certain websites, whether it be social media or other websites, use some type of website blocker. I think that really you want to put your sole focus into your studying when you're studying, and when you're not studying, then that's when you can just have time to do whatever you want to do. But really, it's about segmenting your studying and segmenting your free time, and that's how you're going to be the most efficient. The final point that I want to make is really you have to enjoy what you're studying, and I think that This is important because you have to change your mindset. You have to trick yourself into thinking that you enjoy what you're doing. And the example that I give is that when I was always studying for the verbal section of either the SAT or the MCAT, I always did so much better when I was reading about something that I enjoyed, something that interests me. But when I was reading about some type of art history or political science or things that really weren't interesting to me personally, I always scored much lower. And I think the same logic goes with your actual studies for college and as well as med school, that you have to change your mindset and trick yourself into enjoying what you study. It just makes learning more fun and it makes things a lot easier to study when it's not just a chore. I think it's a lot easier to say this when you're in med school, when you're doing what you want to do. When you're in college, it's a lot harder because you're taking a lot of prereqs that you really just don't care about. But you really just have to focus and change the mindset that you're having, or you need to change the major that you're in. You need to try to find a major that's the most conducive to your learning. Just because, um, let's say, for example, you want to go to med school and you feel like you need to have some type of science major, but you don't really enjoy all the all these science courses that you're taking, it's okay to change a major to something else that really is focusing on what you enjoy and what what you're really good at. Because I think that that's really going to showcase and make you a better learner if you're studying something that you enjoy. Definitely in med school, you better enjoy it because this is probably what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. But in college, it's a lot more difficult. But I think that definitely setting yourself up for success is going to be very important to, to getting better grades and to enjoy what you're doing. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.